Hey, sorry I'm late. I am once again having beep boop beep boop the logical problems. I can't even get my fucking internet to work, so I'm happy we're connected at all. Testicular hey. difficulties. Uh, yes, testicular difficulties are just not growing in. <laughs> Hi, I'm Violet. And I am Acid Betty. We are real life brother and sister, and we are totally obsessed with all things reality TV. Welcome to season two of our weekly reality rundown, where we try to talk about all of our favorite shows, i.e. reality shows. Speaking of, what is on your <laughs> testicular difficulty feed, Violet? <laughs> Well, believe it or not, even though I've had shit internet for like a week, I somehow was able to watch some reality TV. Wow. Work it out. Because <laughs> that is commitment. <laughs> or the recordings work. So, the recordings work. Maybe that's what it is. The recordings work and I find the time. I'm like, oh, internet's on? Let me get to that right away. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think I already mentioned to you, I just wanted to recap that Below Deck Med, that means Captain Sandy. Right. Has premiered a new season, so we're back in Greece. Is it called Below Deck Med? Because every time you say Med, I'm assuming it's a doctor oriented. Yeah, it's, it's a, Below Deck Mediterranean. Right, but when you every time you say Med, I immediately am like, ooh, hospital on the water, how exciting. But that's what they call it. They actually don't call it Below Deck Mediterranean. They call it Below Deck oh, Med. All right, they don't want to say Mediterranean. I yeah. know, maybe someone was like, that's a lot of, right, people can't spell. Sorry um, to interrupt, I was So curious. we had that. Yes. Well, no, I mean, you know, I... I love Below Deck, so I was I was loving it because the first episode is always exciting. You get to meet everyone. You don't know who's new. Blah, 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 blah. But what was the most interesting thing about it was MILF Manor uh -huh. the crossover. Oh, yeah. Everybody was caught. Yeah, so the, everybody that works the ship were commenting on this particular group. It's all boys, and I do mean boys. And I think maybe tops three times in all of, all of the Below Decks and all the seasons, they mention age and how young they are. You know, so they actually said, like, several of them were like, oh, my God, did you see how young they are? So I immediately looked at the television to pay attention, like, how young are these people that they're commenting? It's not rare to have rich kids on a boat. And there was the primary, Mr. Jacob. Mm. And I, rec I recognized him immediately, fresh off of Milk Manor. Is it the same production? Are they on the same channel? No, it's not on the same channel. It's not the same network, not at all. Oh. Thought it was interesting. It was kind of like, oh, are you in, t you know, you're in town. I also thought it's interesting that he was the primary only because the, I mean, you've been watching MILF Manor, the, the, inf like the, oh, I'm losing my words today. The um, impression that I get is that his father is the one with the money. Well, that's how it works though. If, if our dad had the right. money, we'd be walking around like it was ours too. Well, folks, that's how far I am from it. I don't even know how like it that's, works or I don't even, I'm not even thinking and about it. that's <laughs> the drama of rich people is not, oh, the woes of, cause we're like, oh, if only we could be rich. It's be, the drama that they have to deal with is the fact that it's not their money. Money, so they have to kiss ass and then when their dad or whoever has the money says you have to go to this event or you have to dress this way act this way they have to with threat of losing all of that money oh no there's always a high there's always a, so, a invisible price to pay yeah when you take money from someone else i think he i so, think yeah. he was there just because of like i think they throw in you know like bachelor people and like production people you know what i mean people from tv shows that are not necessarily i definitely think something was happening there was something cro an actual crossover happening there because it was just too too convenient and too weird i mean he just got booted off the show and then he shows up yeah Black. see it's very weird I wouldn't be surprised if it was like uh, we'll pay for we'll pay for the event like you know you coming on the boat mm -hmm. if you pay the tip maybe that's what it is to where it's like you don't have to pay for the boat and this and that because we're filming you which is probably the right. the mass amount of money um, but if you do cash tip maybe that's in the production. Well, I'll tell you, though, it was interesting because there were some major fails, like provisions didn't show up. Okay, so I did. <laughs> I saw, like, the beginning of that, and that was it. <laughs> when they didn't. And the girl was like, no, Rose. when they did show up. Well, imagine, like, there was actually no wine at all. Yeah. <laughs> there were certain things that just didn't exist on the boat. And I remember thinking, holy shit, what is that? Like a $40,000 trip? And they're like, sorry, no wine, no fish, no no toilet paper. You know what I mean? I'd be like, all right, well, bye. Well, well, this is when I get another yacht. Jill See Zarin <laughs> would have been like, you know what I would have done? I would have <laughs> flown in a special wine maker. And we I would have been making wine on the boat. with everything on it. <laughs> and then we would bring everything over there to over here. See, this is why I'm here. I think of these things. Oh my God. Do you want me to draw you a diagram? Do you want me to put you in touch with some people? <laughs> 
All so right. that was interesting. Milf Matter. I have to catch myself up on Milf Matter myself. Okay. Well, then, oops. <laughs> Spoiler yeah, alert. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> he loses. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so then you have 90 Day Fiance, which is continuing on HBO Max. And since it's, like, still in the beginning, uh, they're still introducing, you know, they're doing the trickle, trickle effect where it's like, oh, surprise, there's still cast members you have yet to meet. So I just met some new cast members, and these are really sketchy. This is UK. Yes, this is UK. Um... And these are girls that are like not traditionally attractive to American societal norms. And they're already been sending money on a regular basis. And mm. both of their men say to camera, like one of them literally calls himself a playboy and brags about how easy it is that he could gifts from and money from women. I have a feeling they introduced these two because it was like, here's your real drama. Like here's here are the couples that are gonna eat shit right here in this season. Here yeah, we go. Right, get to know them. <laughs> so it really felt that way. And then of course we have the cute little couple that I love, which is um I always forget the guy's, the English guy's name, but the Thai's guy name is Sprite. And uh, his boyfriend was baking him a cake and Sprite asked him or said, make sure you add the MSG. And he was serious. Oh my God. I was like, holy shit. It needs to taste good. Add the <laughs> MSG. <laughs> I've never heard that before. So I was like, that's interesting. That's an interesting joke. Okay. And then... Uh, well, he was serious. That's why I was like, they're baking. And he's like, literally straight, you know, don't forget to add the MSG. Looking for it in the kitchen. Like, it right. exists in an English kitchen. Just interesting. Okay, so then there was this last note I had. And this is special just for you. Oh, awesome. Because this is a throwback to a conversation you and I had long before the podcast. Um, because we had clocked in one of the tell in one of the, the confessionals that they had movement. Remember, it was like Veronica or someone. That they had movement, like an incense burning or something. And we were like, we're pretty sure that room doesn't exist. If that's like a uh, green screen and how are they getting this is like a new level am i making Maybe, sense when i'm yeah. speaking okay so anyway they recently had a confessional i just sent it to you whereby sophie is talking to camera and she gets really upset and she gets up and walks out but they follow her this time and so the minute she walks out she gets up from the chair you see her pill the pillow fall and then behind that pillow is this duct tape piece of shit vinyl <laughs> pillow and then they follow her to the door and the door is literally like a double auditorium door that you'd get in a in a meeting room or a conference room that you'd book at like the Marriott. That. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So that confirmed our original theory that none of these rooms exist. The only thing that exists is them and the chair. Yeah. I, th I thought that was interesting. That's all. I kind of gathered that. Well, we knew that, but I wanted confirmation yeah. and it was right there. Yeah. Yeah, that was it, really. What's on your feed? Not much. <laughs> um, I've been keeping up with the baddies um, as I do. Okay. And I've been enjoying um, Aubrey O'Day taking mm. in the sights and sounds of living with the baddies on in the Caribbean. Right, because she's full time. She's not just she didn't just dip in. No, and just, she's, she's there like, enjoying <laughs> it. And she's kind of like turned herself into like Natalie's sidekick. So she's always just kind of like it's kind of like the prison bitch. She's like the prison bitch where she's like she just picked this like strongest girl and just became her wife. That's basically what's going on. Um, but it works and it's funny. Hey, that's smart though. Um, but uh, a return of an old bad bitch by the name of Tommy comes back and she's <laughs> she comes back on a white horse, literally. She comes back. She's um, She was the one that I liked because all the girl I, I described her to you because all the girls are quote unquote bad girls and they fight and do whatever but you can see them staying within the realms of the tv situation like not messing with camera crew or setup or this and that and listening when producers say be quiet and this and that so there's like still some decorum whereas tommy <laughs> is a true baddie like she don't give a fuck so it's like if there's something within grasp she grabs it to throw it and that includes lighting camera security people and everything the set so she's so the one on the she's the one that of, takes stuff and was like throwing like throw, literally taking down walls and just like oh yeah. so i'm saying yeah on the scale of like the chick that was like half asleep at the reunion the last baddies to all the way to like biggie in the trailer should have hit her should have hit her oh, she's past oh yeah biggie. no tommy that's what i'm saying Tom, there's like a few there's a there's like a whole new level a few to bad the scale girls now. and a few bad boys that are legitimate they really don't bad, give a fuck yeah to where it's like yeah. you question whether they're ever, ever come back because they're so bad that they don't play by the rules of production well do you remember also do you remember um oh shit from the bobby lights the the little one the dingling <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was like legit in and out of jail on a constant basis. Yeah, well, that's that's a lot of them. <laughs> and remember him? He used to just roll like people would be fighting, and then all of a sudden there was dingling. He'd be like, "Yeah, dingling." <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, "What are you doing, dude?" 
Yeah. But so I thought that was funny that she comes on a horse, not her. So it's we- it was funny to watch her in the hand learn. Yeah. What is that about? <laughs> just weird. Just for the drama. We really are still in the 90s, though. When I think about that, some airbrush shit I've seen them wear, you know what I mean? I'm like, wow, we are legit yeah. in the 90s. Yeah. So that's about yeah. it. So she comes on and she actually starts shit with Natalie and they do fight it out, which is kind of funny. So that's what I mean. Tommy is like a real old school okay, girl. Okay, so let me ask you this. When you say that, see, for me, it's almost starting to read. I'll have to watch it, but it's almost starting to read like old school um, wrestling. Like that shit's, it's like becoming scripted almost. Like that almost sounds like that was planned, right? Well, sort of or planned. Or does it? Like when you're watching it, does it feel like it's, no, well, like it's real? Yes, it's real. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, there's moments where it's like I see. Like there's moments of wrestling that's real, but also the situations are very like, don't yeah, pick up no, my, yeah. like you are kind of know so that they're set two up. things. One, I say it's real in okay. the way that we know they're going to fight because they hate each other. So that's the quote unquote setup, right? Like, you know, if they're in the same room, they're going to fight each other, but that's the quote unquote unreal part, but that's still real. Do you know what I mean? Because they're beefing online this and that's like, if I ever see you, bitch, I'm coming for you. And they do. But I have seen some fake shit with the bad girls where all of a sudden one side is mad at the other side and they land at an Airbnb and they're like, well, it just so happens that this house has another house. So why don't you guys stay over there and we'll stay over here? And I'm like, it's just so convenient that when the people are fighting, there's enough room for them to live in separate houses and come together. That is planned. And I've seen that go down with this TV show. Okay, because, you know, I mean, you and I were big fans. Maybe I was a bigger fan. But I, we were really into the WWE, right? Or WWF? Anyway, Hulk Hogan days. Jake the Snake. Even though it was real, like they were getting hurt and they were fighting each other and shit. It wasn't real, right? right? So when you literally tell me a bitch is rolling in on a elephant or a white horse, I mean, and then fighting with the host, I'm like, that sounds so straight out of like Hulk Hogan, Jake the Snake. It is. But I say fighting with the host because the Natalie is a lot of talk and she doesn't really fight. People don't usually come for her. People will yell at her and this and that. But she's very much like, you don't really touch me. I don't know. The last reunion, remember someone jumped on her chair? Right. But I'm saying like but there's some people and tommy <laughs> is one that was like <laughs> okay i hear what you're saying yeah I'm oh my taking gosh your you know wig. what that reminds me of the jamaican in bobby lights also at the reunion he was also one of those people like you could tell there was this weird line that kind of people were like yeah we don't do that and the jamaican guy was like no you literally are gonna have to have five security carry me out of the building because i'm gonna hurt well, that's you right that's tommy okay when she's like i yeah. go tommy Bring some reality to that real reality. And she's just very, like, hardcore and old school. And she looks fabulous and, you know, wears nothing. And so she's, like, she's the part. So it's, I'm glad that she's back. Like, she's, an, a, like, an, like her and Megan. Like, Megan's, a, like, a fighter, too. Megan's, like, if she don't like you, she just doesn't like you. She just wants to fight and, like, will tell you why she doesn't like you. And that's, like, I love that. Oh, my God. I just can't even. <laughs> I mean, you really need to have an attitude. Like, if you're paying all that money to make yourself right and then you're going to go let someone beat on it. Yeah, well, some of all, yeah. I just, it's hard for me to wrap my head around that always. <laughs> just like, damn, you know, if I got titties and they were like fresh and new out of the box, I wouldn't be like, yeah, come and fuck but them up. I don't job, know. It's just weird. You really think about it. No, you really I get think it. it. Like, that's your job. Yeah, like I'm not a professional fighter. That's, that's yeah. what it is. So I get it. Yeah. And then that was really it of the most exciting thing. And then I've watched, been watching the challenge, All Stars, typical, oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And Cam yeah. got. Killer Cam got yeah. voted off, and I was sad. Aww. It's funny, I never liked her, but now they I do. They had that moment. Well, because they have the little family. Yeah, it's I cute. It's a cute little that. spin. It yeah, the that's a cute. Best thing ever. It made him yeah. interesting to me. Oh my God, the moment when she was in the pit, and he was like up on the bleachers, and they were like, she was like, it's all right. I don't know. That all that, I love that stuff. Yeah, he's. That's some good, that's some good wholesome TV right yeah, there. Yeah, he's the jam. And that was mm-hmm. it. That was all on my feed. So, no, it was that. Yeah. (laughs) So, it brings us to our famous show, which we are still talking about, is 90 Day Fiance and its spin off, Love in Paradise. It's season four, episode seven, which is important to say because it's only hour two of people. In, uh, it takes so long for this show to get along. And Alex and Adriano are missing. Yes, exactly. It's like full episodes where they, and then when we meet Alex and Adriano, they're going to have a fight they're at gonna the restaurant. They're going to be exactly where they were yeah, the last they're time. They're going to be in the yeah, car fighting. they're going to still be where we live. Right. Three subs, if you need more God. Anyway, <laughs> um, so... <laughs> 
Uh, so thank you, TLC. We need a break from religion anyway um, versus the sex debate, right? And there's plenty of debate left for the rest of the cast, I guess. Annie and Kyle are still debating over sperm donations. Madeline and Luke are debating a prenup. Um, and Aaliyah's friend is trying to join the prenup party for sure <laughs> by stirring things up between Aaliyah and Sean during their... <laughs> What is it? Their anniversary? What is that called? Their honeymoon. Oh. During their honeymoon. Their engagement. Their engagement. Trip. Like celebrations. And she's like. And, and she's like up in Colombia, like money? you know what? Or Brazil, like I'm gonna channel Miss Jasmine. Go yeah. and start talking prenups. He really was giving me the same thing that Gina was giving me. It was like the second after you're engaged. Like, am I in your will? <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> that girl Jackie was like, what's what up? What happened if you die? I was like, what <laughs> is going on? <laughs> Respect to him for calling it out. Yeah, though. true. So a real boring episode. For real. I agree. Because I agree. it like, yeah, real boring. I mean, we can break it down each one, but uh, in I Columbia. I mean, really, we just uh, summarized the entire Aaliyah and Sean experience right there. I know, we don't even we have just to literally talk talked about it. it. I know. That was it, too. It's true. And I just it just occurred. And the only thing they were at the waterfall. is that he has three kids. <laughs> Whoa. Right. And Jackie's, uh, see, everything that she said is legit. Good for her. And lucky Aaliyah to have a friend like that, cousin or whoever she is. You should have a friend like that. I mean, I don't like the timing of it. And why is she even there? But I hey. was thinking, why is she there? Yeah, like, oh, romantic. And she was right, like, third wheel like you should have excused yourself girl. yeah that was weird <laughs> you should have been like oops uh, i feel sick i can't come yeah so anyway so yeah that was brazil for us that was Leah and sean <laughs> and in colombia we have luke and madeline and madeline screaming because her press on nails are falling off okay so we i want to talk about luke i love a man that can do things with no shame i had a boyfriend that was part of why i loved him because he put himself in situations where he knew he'd be look foolish and he did it anyway and luke was adorable i don't know where the fuck she took him i have lived in countries like this there are better places she literally took him to like the most <laughs> random like little restaurant. diner cafe <laughs> yeah and everyone's looking at them and then that weirdo comes up to dance with her oh yeah yeah very yes i agree it was weird and then her reaction yeah to the nail was like all i was thinking and i literally like nails are my actual life and i was also i was just thinking like bitch if you have nails that long you're responsible for that right but also when they Sorry, showed girl. it the, the whole vision thing popped stuck off. to my head and then i went back and i was like wait a minute doesn't she have a salon which means they should be doing acrylics why did why is she wearing press-on nails she's not i think those are acrylics that's why it hurts so bad and i think they're just done bad Oh, because it just the popped application, off. It popped off. It didn't even like hang on at all. It was like, bye. Wow, interesting. All right. Well, uh, it's very weird. <laughs> well, well, I mean, the one thing I want to talk about, Matt and Luke, is I kind of, I kind of mentioned it last time, and again, this motherfucker Brian. I don't know what this guy's damage is. Why is it your name always coming up in these conversations? Like you're just the little guy on the shoulder whispering to Luke about all the things he needs to do for his relationship, and oh, now Madeline's sleeping with someone else, and there's a rumor, but I gotta drive up there to tell you, Brian, get a life. There's always that in the sh in this show. There's always a friend or something that's like. Some weird character that's all up in it. But it's weird because he has his own girlfriend. Like he has, you would think that he has, he's occupado, you know? Mm, not for the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. I literally typed out, hey, Brian, what's your damage? <laughs> 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 yeah, the rumor mills and stuff is really strange. The fact that he needs to drive up to tell him, like the drama. This guy's literally like, I want to get on camera as much as possible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's where that's at. And then the other part that Ugh, I thought was barf. funny is they're having like major financial problems. And taking and another so vacation. And so take a vacation to a luxury getaway. Which, by the way, I wanted to mention, did not look very luxury to me. If I have to carry down a raft like that, in, down some desert scape, to this little hole that looked like it was man-made, and you're in like the most beautiful country in the world, that would, seemed like a weird choice. Everything was weird. I've been there. That's what I'm I'm just saying. I've been to that country, and that was a weird choice. Like You literally could have put yourself into a jungle, up in a tree or something, with your own waterfall. Yeah. So I know maybe... So maybe it was cheap, because maybe that was like camping in Colombia. Yeah, okay, maybe. Because there was no luxury thing about that at all. That was like it literally, seemed, like, it felt like cat Paris, like Elsinore. they like, still, like, like <laughs> got a place to stay. Like, it was still, like, a room and everything. Like, they're still paying. Right. That's what I mean. It's like, okay. And look how he, see, and this is what I'm talking about. Look how he puts all the choices he makes 
on her now. Like, I bought this apartment. I did all these things. Like, honey, at what point are you doing it for yourself? Yeah, they're fucked. Unless the apartment's in her name, which I don't no. think it is, honey. Nine. Prenup, 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 prenup. And then we got Annie and Kyle who are just ridiculous. Literally, you know what? We could watch a year of them and it's going to be the same shit. Her in Disneyland where he's like kicking over children and she's like, gee, I don't know. Maybe he's not good for me. And then them at Knott's Berry Farm and he's having sex with every girl. And she's like, well, gee, I wonder if he'll quit. Like, it's the same bullshit. It's the same fucking bullshit between them all. Well, I think what bothers me is the things that she says. I always wind up typing these strange, the, the things they say to even each other. Everything is so natural between them. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Like, absolutely no moment have we ever seen them look natural. Like, did you see him, like, like a psychopath nothing. grab her hand? I was like, I need to show her physical attention. I've never done this before. Did you see her pat, like, you pat so her? So weird. I do it for you. And then on the couch... <laughs> That's the moment she said everything's so natural. I was like, are we experiencing the same thing? Because if I'm feeling this gross and awkward and I'm not even there. Yeah. Oh my God. The the weird feeling in that place. And then you're like, sure, let's go to bed. And then I'm starting to think like, girl, how horny are you? Like, fuck, at this point, pay somebody. He is just so weird. I mean, I have just so many thoughts about him. He's just a fucking freaky deaky. Especially when his his whole psychological reasoning and his pathology is, oh, I was afraid some men get older and they wanted to have children and I didn't want to. Honey, having children, the regret that these men have... (laughs) I didn't have the experience of having a family and raising a child and having that bond with a a, a boy or a, a woman and watching them grow. It's not I was able to like populate the earth and there's someone out there that I don't even know. Having a kid, that's not the regret they're speaking to. They're speaking to they miss the experience of family, fatherhood, spreading your fucking no, Zoa he's everywhere. Crazy. You know what I mean? He's whack at all. He's whack at Oh my god, let's talk about him meeting the friend. What is like <laughs> hi. Do you know that I what was it? That I donate. <laughs> no, I wish he said it that. He did. Hi, does she know I get people pregnant? <laughs> oh yeah, you're German too. I have a German kid. I think he's like six. <laughs> <laughs> That's his, he's, he's weird. That's his. That's not even hello, how are you? That was his hello. That's his connection to the earth, girl. He's, something's missing. We're watching someone with something missing. And then, yeah, it was, I'm working on it myself. Pat, pat, pat for you. (laughs) And, oh yeah, he refers to their connection as spiritual. They have a spiritual connection. I would love to know what spirit realm that is, because I'm never visiting it. The upside down world. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's much. (laughs) <laughs> it's much and i cannot it's much. and i won't <laughs> I, I want them to like skip an episode can we skip an episode with them let's go back to alex and adrian at least they're beautiful and interesting and they're in italy yeah so that was all i have for like the entire episode i mean i got stuff i got yeah, that's all i have i'm just like i'm over them they're just gross and the red flags keep coming and she's just like dirted her so yeah <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to quit doing it. And she's like, I need you to. And then they're like, oh, but we love each other. Next episode. Uh, stupid people. Oh, at 22, I decided I couldn't find anyone to like me. Uh, okay. People are so weird. He's, he's Asperger's. She's like, oh, it makes so much sense now. He's something strange. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on to the goat. Fuck that show. Fuck those crazy people. Let's go. Well, okay, fuck it. We're back with the goat. Episode seis. And our darling Alyssa is gone, and so is Tech. But the herd marches on. Jill and Day are scheming, and you know sometimes in reality shows, the shit really does float (laughs) to the fucking top. Who will get kicked out of the pasture this episode? It's a shit cast now. Oh, honey. It's getting more and more boring with and every I episode. Have so very They're little. They're like, oh, you're interesting. Get the fuck out of this points. house. I have so very little. <laughs> I have nothing. Ugh. I think a lot of what I had to say was what I just said. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Jill and Day found each other. Surprise, they're both assholes. Right. And <laughs> okay. the only thing that's funny is like Jill wins because at, at first she was like playing the wrong game. She was like playing Scrabble and just like make, finding little words within the, you know, in the letters instead of the right. word. So that was ironic that she wins. She's like playing Boggle, which is such a bubby yeah, game. Yeah, that's the name. <laughs> yeah, like a total... Your age is showing Jill. It's a total different game. <laughs> yeah. And then Reza. And oh my gosh, I wanted to talk about the fairness because how are you putting Jill up against someone that doesn't even speak English as her first language? That's not right. It's a spelling challenge. The spelling shouldn't have mattered. I agree. It should have mattered. She got it right. She just added a letter. Yeah, I agree with you. 
No, there were several times that they all had right answers. They just couldn't spell for shit. Like CJ can't spell. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't like that because some of them literally, English is not their first language. I agree. So fuck I off. I agree. Yeah. Whatever. I felt like it was very short because the challenges sucked and then it was boom to the end. And the best part was the end because I love the fact that it fucked up. Like the fact that Reza was like, I'm going to get petty. Can't wait to get petty and block Jill's ass. Jill, block that bitch. Well, I wanted to say really quick, right? So, like, yeah, Reza, Reza, like, was panicking, right? And I just wanted to mention that there was this comment that Wendell made about Day. And I was like, it's really ironic because Wendell says something about uh, big, she's big brother and big brother players are shady. And I was like, motherfucker, you're from Survivor. <laughs> like, Survivor players are like, my grandmother died. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that is the shadiest of all players. Shit, Survivor's like, I'm going to take your food. No, Survivor is the worst. So I just thought the irony of him saying, oh, look out. I was like, oh, Wendell, look in a mirror, honey. <laughs> That's funny. But oh, Jill and Jill making that statement after, yeah, Reza literally tries to fucking speak to it and like calls her out when they were all standing there about what a piece of shit yes. she is. And she makes that comment, because this actually hit me on a personal note as well. She goes, I love you like a brother, but <laughs> it's not personal. And I was like, well, let's see, I have a brother. And I've also, I'm a reality slut. So like I've watched siblings play. And let me tell you, when it's a blood thing, when it's a sister, 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 brother, when the comment, I love you like a brother, that means everyone on this show is going to die because I'll never say my brother. It's not just a game when you're actually like, I love you like a brother. It's like, oh, I love you from the bottom of my heart. No, she's showing who she is. (laughs) She's... Yeah, and I love him. See, now do you see why I love him? Because he was like... Uh, He's cute. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I like that he was like, yes, I love that. (laughs) He's I love he's a, a lot like he's he's interesting to watch. He's like right there. What I like about him is that he's never changed in all the years he's been on his show. Like he is from this rich spoiled family, but even with all the rules of his culture and the religion because it's like persian and jewish that's part of the show is like it's all of this like restraint on how he needs to be as well as his queerness and he's like so aggressively in your face on all levels and it just never changes so you always kind of know where you're at with him which, which is I good love. that motherfucker was like hair and makeup what's up yeah bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I just like that he was like, and threw the goat. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they said, though, that he was like laughing that the one girl did it. And then he did the same thing. Well, yeah. I think because he resolved, he didn't yeah. care. I think you and I might have been at that place, too. Oh, 100. If we had feelings like that. I love all that. Yeah, we would have been like, you know what? I don't want to be the high road today. Fuck it. Oh, I'm never high road. I mean, I think I am. When I'm quiet, I'm high road. And then it's de- then it's low road. There's, do you know what I mean? I'm never... <laughs> I do know. <laughs> that's I'm, it. I, I know yeah, you. Fuck that. There's no middle no. road. And that's a quick shift, everybody. There's no elevator. <laughs> it's a drop, like the Tower of Terror. One day you're up. And that's the go. Next day you're down. <laughs> that's the go, right? That's the jam on that. Damn. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah I guess there I mean, that's it. Jesus. All right. Fuck it. Join us next week as we discuss episode eight of Ninth Day Fiance Love in Paradise. Aaliyah wants Sean to be monogamous and Alec wants Adriano to be monogamous. Well, I mean, do we even know that? It's been a full week. We haven't seen them. Will the ladies succeed in getting their partners <laughs> to fully commit? And Madeline says she's monogamous, but Luke's friend says otherwise. Who do we believe? Luke's friend or the 16-year-old girl or however old she is? More importantly, who does Luke believe? Yeah. Maybe we'll find out at the tell-all. <laughs> Maybe part the four. end of next year. <laughs> In August. And we'll be jumping back into the field with the GOAT Episode 7. And Reza is gone. They've literally voted out all the personalities. Hey, production, there are only so many balloons you can fill with weird substances before it really gets boring. (laughs) Like, all the challenges are balloons. (laughs) And you voted out all the fucking interesting people. So anyway, will someone finally make a move on Jill or or Devon? See, this is my thing where I think Jill may win. Because people kind of forgot that she was in the room. You know? And they're just like, do-do-do. I don't know. This is, again, one of those situations where they're just kind of like fluffing her off thinking they're going to get her later and then it'll yeah. be too late. Anyway. Or Davon is just, Davon will just cut her throat at the end and then she'll win. something. That's I don't really want Jill to thing. win. Anyway, tune in next week. Hopefully things will get more interesting. Yes, you can reach out via our website and let us know what you want us to talk about. Or if you have something to add at our website at sorry we, oh, sorry we're late. We didn't want to be here.com. Or we didn't want to, with the number, to be here.com. Find us on Spotify, YouTube, 
and threads. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at We Didn't Want to Be Here. And do all those things because I don't think, Vi, you know this, like on our YouTube, we get views, right? We get a, like some views. This time we got three views on the last video, which <laughs> is literally like nothing compared to all our others. So we oh. must have said something in that video or something, but that doesn't make sense because I even have friends that say they watch the show. So I don't know what happened. Maybe last I'm not week, the only one having issues right but now. I'm telling you three. You know what? I mean, three views. I don't want to take. I don't want to take responsibility for anything. But you know, I have not posted on Instagram in about over a week. Yeah, I'm really sucky on our Instagram. Do too. you think that does something? I don't know. Well, well we're gonna we're gonna work it out, people. I but promise. We're gonna tune in. I saw some comments okay. of some guy loving it and catching our theme songs and stuff and saying this is crazy. I'm so glad we're here. So we're glad you're here too. We wish there was more of you. I think people are watching it, and you know what? If we piss people off because of watermelons and Jeebus, yeah, I don't well, know. Then you can kiss my butt. Piss off anyway. So I am Acid Betty. And I'm Violet. And as the face of this show, we always say <laughs> You've got a face for radio. <laughs> that was good. Let's do that. We did. Let's just it. Leave there you go. Like, let's just do that. Bye, y'all. Yeah. Bye, Lachayum. <laughs>